When Harry met Jim. Having arrived in Hawes not even an hour ago, met the owner of the local garage, dodged tractors towing trailers stuffed with sheep, and been advised on where to buy the best pork pies in the Dale by a friendly bloke called Dave Calvert, Harry was now staring at a stern-looking tup, large enough to put a saddle on and go for a ride. Your dad's a farmer, then? he asked, as Jim Metcalf, the PCSO he'd just met, jumped over the railings and into the pen. He is, Jim said, over in Butterset. He's lived there for his whole life. Somehow wrote me mum into marrying him and throwing herself into the farming life as well. It was my granddad's place. They farmed it together, until he went and had heart attack out on the fields when I was a kid. Grandma followed soon after. Dad thinks she couldn't bear the idea of Grandad being somewhere she wasn't. Harry gestured at the tup, which was standing in the middle of the pen on sturdy legs of mottled black and white hair. Its thick grey-white fleece was wrapped tightly around its broad, muscular shoulders. It had a black face with clear, dark eyes, and huge, curled horns sat on top of its head. It looked strong enough to send a fully grown man flying, and Harry was very sure he didn't want to be that man. So, what do you want me to do then? he asked. We need to grab it, said Jim. Harry hesitated. He'd grabbed many things in his life, including a number of dogs and an awful lot of criminals, but never a sheep. Um, by we... You mean you, obviously, he said. No, this bugger will need us both, said Jim. Tups are usually fairly tame because they're so used to being handled like, but this one, what about it? Jim shook his head. I'll be honest, right now, I'm not sure why my dad bought it in the first place. The price was good, which was fair enough, but I've been watching him this past half hour or so, and he's a bit grumpy. He's a bit of a grumpy sod, so I'll tell you that for now. The tup. Harry noticed, was now eyeballing him. Come on then, Jim said. The sooner we get this done, the sooner you can get settled in. You've not met the, other, the rest of the team then. Harry shook his head. You're the first, he added. You don't want to change first before we do this? Put on a boiler suit or something to protect your uniform? Jim laughed. No point in wasting time with that, he said. Most days end up with muck on me somewhere. Can't avoid it living around here. He then beckoned Harry into the pen with a wave of his hand. Away then, get yourself over. Wondering just what the hell he was doing, Harry climbed into the pen. Immediately the tup switched its attention from Jim to Harry and stamped on one of its front hooves on the concrete floor of the pen so hard Harry was surprised he didn't see sparks. He doesn't seem very happy, Harry said, still not exactly sure what he was supposed to be doing. He's not, Jim replied. Last place he wants to be is in here with us. That makes two of us, Harry said. Now what? Grab those horns of his, said Jim. Harry was fairly sure that he couldn't have heard Jim properly. What? I'll take hold of each side, Jim explained. That way, we'll have him under control. His horns, said Harry, staring at the massive appendages sticking out of the top of the tup's head. You want me to grab one of them and... I do, but they're bloody enormous. Jim gave an improving nod. He's a fine-looking animal, isn't he? He said... I can see why my dad was taken with him. You ready? To grab those horns? Of course I'm bloody not. Ignoring Harry's protest, Jim pointed to the other side of the pen. You go around there and I'll stay here, he said. He can't deal with both of us at once, so we'll be able to catch him off guard. Doing as Jim had instructed, Harry had a horrible feeling he was being used as bait. When he came to stand at the other side of the pen, he noticed that the animal had now lost all interest in Jim completely. Instead, its eyes were now fixed firmly on him. 
So is there a technique to this then? Harry asked, doing his best to ignore the staring eyes of the tup. There is, said Jim. You just grab those horns as quickly and firmly as you can. Last thing either of us want is a snapped wrist. What? Jim held up a hand dismissively. Don't worry. It won't happen, he said. Mind you, keep out of the way of those legs of his too, as he'll have a nasty kick on him. And he'll want to throw us as well, given the chance, so best we don't give it to him. You ready? You already asked me that, said Harry. Now! shouted Jim. Harry quickly reached out for the tup's horns, grabbing one and holding it fast. Jim grabbed the other. The animal bucked its head forward, then snapped it back, yanking itself free of Harry and Jim. Then it jabbed its head forward and Jim wasn't quick enough to get out of the way. Harry watched as Jim crashed painfully to the ground. Jim, you okay? Grab him! Jim roared back, rolling onto his knees to get back onto his feet. Harry lunged and found himself holding both horns. For a moment, the tup just stood there, calm and still. Then it moved. And with such speed and strength, Harry was suddenly being dragged around the pen. Don't let go, Jim called out. Just hold on. What the hell do you think I'm doing? Harry shouted back. The tup was running in circles round the pen and Harry was doing his best to brace his feet against the concrete floor and bring it to a stop. You're doing great, Harry, said Jim. You've got him. No, I bloody well haven't, Harry shouted back as his feet slipped forward, causing him to drop onto the back of the tup, the animal's thick neck now under his right arm. He could feel the animal's muscles rippling beneath the thick fleece. He's tiring, Jim said. Makes two of us, Harry replied, though seeing no evidence of it himself. It was then that Harry noticed how the previously quiet sides of the pen were now lined with spectators. Wherever he looked, eyes stared back, some darkened beneath the peaks of caps, all of them inquisitive. He had a sneaking suspicion a good number of his impromptu audience were hoping to see blood. Then, as quickly as it had set off, the tup brought itself to a stop. Jim came over, grabbed the horns, and Harvey, uh, Harry, how did I get that wrong? Harry at last managed to get back to his feet. An odd sound erupted, and Harry realised most of those staring at him now were clapping their hands. Well done, lad, said one man, who was resting himself on a shepherd's crook, the hook at the end made from a sheep's horn. Uh, Thanks, Harry replied. Thought you were mad to be getting in there, like, the man said, a faint smile on his face. Not least in them daft shoes you're wearing, but there you go, you survived, didn't you? The man turned away from the pen and walked off. So, now what do we do with it? Harry asked. My dad's bought a little stock trailer down from the farm, Jim said. We'll walk out of the shed and get it loaded and take it back in half an hour or so. The tup struggled, but Harry and Jim held firm, and it quickly gave up. Jim gave the tup a scratch on the patch of coarse black hair between its horns. Strong buggers, aren't they? he said. It won't try and make a break for it, will it? Harry asked. No, not now. He's had his moment and now he's calm. You're sure about that? Oh, you're never sure of anything working with sheep. Jim gave a signal to someone on the other side of the pen who opened it to let them out. Sorry about your shoes. Not exactly dressed for it, am I? Harry said. Jim gave Harry an appraising look from top to bottom before replying, Well, you'll have to get some sturdier shoes, that's for sure. And if you really want to fit in, you best be buying one of these too. From one of the many pockets of his tactical duty vest, Jim pulled out something Harry had previously only associated with hapless pensioners in Last of the Summer Wine, or hipsters trying a bit too hard to be cool in the more fashionable areas of Bristol. 
a flat cap, Harry said. You'll never see me in one of those, I promise you. Jim stuffed the cap back into his pocket. That all depends, he said. Does it? Harry asked. On what? On how long you end up staying here? It's a temporary position, so I won't be for long, said Harry. Course you won't, said Jim, his words dancing on a faint laugh. So, shall I take you back into town then? A few minutes later, and with the tub secured in the stock trailer, Harry followed Jim back through the mart towards town. The smell of the tub was still in his nose and on his clothes. His shoes were ruined and his hands and knuckles scuffed and bleeding from the animal's horns. And yet, in spite of all of this, Harry was smiling. Well, that was an experience, he said. Jim laughed. What? Harry asked. Welcome to Wensleydale, said Jim. And with that, led Harry on into Hawes.